Hi, this is Jeff from the Ozark Mountains in Missouri, USA. Back at you today with yet another episode about neat things you can do with your Zoom Floppy. Today we're going to look at another backup method that will allow you to copy some, if not all, of your copy protected disk for your Commodore. Years ago, when my dad passed away, I got all these boxes of disks that I didn't know he still had, including my original Geos disk. Now, I've tried backing these up with the standard uh, backup method and it didn't work because the disk is copy protected and Geos knows when you try to start it in Vice that it's not the original disk. But there's a way around that. So what we're going to use is Commodore 1571 drive, which is faster and it has enough memory and whatnot built in that allows to use nib tools to make an exact sector by sector copy of the disk. To get started, we'll take our Geos disk and we'll pop it right in here. Okay, let's get started. What I've done is put the Geos boot disk in my 1571 drive that's connected to my PC via the uh, zoom floppy and I have the standard uh, GUI for uh, the zoom floppy slash CBM tools up here and uh, we can make a backup copy you know like I showed in the previous video and just take say I want to back up all of these yes it'll ask us for file name oops get D64 file out of that and that will indeed copy the whole disk okay it's made our backup for us I'll go ahead and close that down now, like they say on the cooking shows, I've prepared one earlier. We'll attach a disk image to drive 8. And, oh, that is way out of the screen there. Okay, Commodore 64. Here is the one I copied before. Using the regular zoom floppy method. And you can see all our files are on there. So, let me scroll this up here so you can see it, maybe. No, you won't be able to see that. Okay. I'm just going to tell it to auto-start that here in Vice. This is Vice 3.2. And it'll look like it's booting. And then we get that. It knows that it's not the original disk. So, for the next part, I'm going to go ahead and just reset... So we have Vice Reset now. There's another way besides the normal uh, CBM Tools uh, backup method that we can use for backing up our original disk using the Zoom Floppy. And that is with a set of utilities called Nib Tools. Uh, the website for Nib Tools is here. So the c64preservation.com. You can see that there. The project is located on GitHub. You can download the latest binaries from there, or you can go to GitHub and find out some more information. I'll include these links below. If you go to the latest branch right here in GitHub and you scroll down, there's a little better documentation as to what these do. And you'll see here there's a whole lot of options you can use when using this which all depend on the particular uh, copy protection method that the uh, disk originally used. Um, 
so you'll have to scour the forums and that type of thing if you're having problems to find out exactly how to, to set uh, these options to be able to back up your disk. Okay, I'm going to bring this in the center here. Nib Tools is a set of command line programs. You download it and unzip it, and then you have to uh, use them from the command line, which is not as difficult as it might seem. So I've got a command line open here on that folder, and I've asked to do a nib read, and I'm going to save that as a geos.nib file, which is the uh, nibble tools or nib tools format, I guess you would say. So we'll do that and it is going to look at the disk and it's going to go track by track reading exactly what's on each track and making a backup copy of it exactly, not of just the program bits which is what the normal uh, CBM tools uh, backup method does. This is actually kind of making an exact image of the whole floppy disk. So now we've got that. Okay. So now we have our nib file up here. That's not something that we can directly load uh, up in Vice, but we can take that and make another disk, you know, write out another disk that's exactly like the disk we write in, and this works pretty good most of the time. Or we can change that into a G64 file, which is a type of file that Vice can read that's more like a uh, complete disk image, uh, not like the program backup, like a D64 file. So if we do a nib convert and we want to go from a geos.nib to a geos.g64. And there we go. So now I'm going to take both of those files. And copy them over here where I like keeping my backup files. And then over in Vice, we'll say attach disk image to drive 8. This is the uh, 3.2 version of Vice. It's kind of an experimental build, and it's a lot better, but it does a few silly things at times. So if I go back here, go to Zeos, Geos done with the uh, nib tools, select our G64. I'll tell it to auto start. You can't see that place because that menu is ginormous. Now this is where we got to before with our standard backup method. And kind of watch down here in the corner this gives you the drive number and track that the drives at and you can see the screen change so we're already doing something. I don't have the mouse controls set up to map that through to Vice right now but we'll be able to see that this does work. And there we go. Now we've successfully backed up our Geos disk. You might be wondering what in the world the difference is between copying a disk with a normal CBM tools GUI and using nib tools. This comes down to how a floppy drive works. A floppy disk itself is just a sheet of plastic, but it's not ordinary plastic. It has a magnetic coating applied to both sides. It has very fine particles that can be magnetized one way or the other, and that is what the floppy drive reads and writes to store data. Of course, there is a metal ring, a hub ring, attached to the center, which gives the drive something to grip to. Before you use the disk, you have to format it. Formatting writes a series of timing markers, the sector markers here, around the disk in a series of concentric tracks. When you are reading and writing data to or from the disk, the drive will move to the correct track, that's one of these guys, these rings, 
and wait until it sees the correct timing mark before reading and writing data. The formatting process will theoretically create sectors, that is, pie-shaped sections of the disk where these timing marks line up. In practice, on simple drives like we have on our Commodores, uh, this isn't possible because uh, the drives like the 1541 have no way of knowing from track to track the rotational angle of the disk. There is this timing hole here, but the 1541 doesn't have a sensor for that. The 1571 does, but I'm not sure to what capacity it's used. The commercial duplicating machines can very precisely align the timing marks from track to track and they can use that as one of the copy protection methods to try to make sure that those are lined up whereas if we copy it using a normal formatting process uh, on our drives we couldn't do that. The, they can also skip formatting entire tracks. I've cut in here the output of nib tools when we were copying the Geos disk before. And you'll notice that as it's reading each track, it'll find out where it's perfectly okay, where there are some problems, which is what the weak GCR is reporting. And as we get toward the end of the disk, kind of those inside tracks, uh, it'll even tell us where those tracks are not formatted. If we go back to the nib tools page on GitHub, it kind of gives you a rundown on different types of copy protection and what all the different options here when you're running nib tools what all those do and how you can use them for various types of copy protection to try and get by it now, i used a 1571 drive because it was basically plug and play you can also use a 1541 drive if you do a parallel port modification and what that involves is uh, creating a socket with some wires on it and a connector and whatnot and here's a web page has all sorts of information about that I'll put the link in the description below so you build this cable and which chip you need to put it on in the drive depends on the exact drive you have uh, the chips may or may not be soldered down depending on your drive but you create your cable you solder that together and you install it in your drive with the connector out the back or out the side like this it has some really good instructions here and different things are required for if you have 1541c or 1541.2 that type of thing and then that hooks to the parallel connection on the zoom floppy and you have to have the right cable for that um, so if you have an extra 1541 laying around and you don't mind modifying it you can use that too Well, I hope you found this useful. I sure have found it awfully nice to be able to back up my original disk. Uh, not only for sentimental reasons, but some of these programs uh, my dad had used to write things and to be able to get that software running uh, in the Vice emulator and to be able to virtually print that out the text file so I can share it with the rest of my family has been invaluable to me. Uh, it's brought back a lot of memories and it's been a lot of fun. So, until next time.